Sonic Seal out. How's everyone doing this morning? Are y'all ready to worship? Come on, stand to your feet and let's worship this morning. Amen. Here we go.
worship the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. And there is freedom in your name. We worship you.
lift your hands, lift your voice and call upon it.
shine through the shadows. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost burn. Holy Ghost burn. Holy Ghost burn. Holy Ghost burn in us this morning. Set us on fire, Lord. Set us on fire. Let us burn for you, Jesus. Let us burn for you, Jesus. Come on. Come on.
today. precious blood of Jesus what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus Lord we don't take this lightly this morning pay the ultimate price for every one of us in this room today. Where would any of us be today, Lord God, without your blood, your body? So Father, we examine our own hearts today before we take it, as the Apostle Paul said. Examine your heart. If there be any sin in your heart, just repent. Just repent right now. That Lord, forgive me. Cry out to Abba Father today. Lord, forgive me for every idle word, every idle deed, Lord Jesus. We ask you to cleanse us and wash us today, God. Let's partake of the bread today for his broken body. It was broken for us. stood an old rugged cross. We partake of his, his body a lot here, celebration of life, but we don't want to take it lightly today. We're all cherish the old rugged cross. I shall never forget. I shall never forget on bended knee, surrendering my life to you, Jesus. I'll never forget that day. And you know what? There's been many days after that I've never forgotten because I've surrendered a lot. And I'm gonna keep on surrendering. Keep on saying yes to him. Lord, we partake of your precious, your precious blood. Let's partake of the juice. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Physical healing, spiritual healing, mentally healing. Hallelujah. Thank you for wholeness. Wholeness. We're whole. We are whole in you, Jesus. We're your body. <laughs> your hands, your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say praise the Lord? Let's give the Lord a great hand clap. Come on. Celebration of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team, that they do such a great job every Sunday leading us in the presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're in for My the biggest God, treat. I need prayer. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've known Nigel and Kathy McNeil since uh, Easter of 2000 in Corpus Christi is where we met them. We were there at, that, at the church there to do worship for, for, for the revival. And when they came in the door and told the pastors that they're here, and pastors said, we have this great worship team to, to do worship for you. He was like, oh, my God. What, what, did. Who did they bring? He didn't know what was going to happen. But he liked us. Can we say so? <laughs> I'm so glad he liked us. And we went on the road from that day on with him for three years on the road. So it's an honor. It's, it's a privilege to honor the man of God. Nigel, we love you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you, Todd. <laughs> Hallelujah. I escaped. <laughs> Glory to God. What a horrible place I chose to live in. I mean, it just turned quite bizarre. Cops patrolling the streets because if you broke curfew, and uh, we're meant to be a free country, and uh, but just crazy now. If uh, my wife is watching this live stream, baby, I'm a want you. Baby, I'm a need you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I miss Kathy, and she's back there with the grandbabies. And uh, I'm praying for those that haven't seen me before. You do need prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Just to cope with what I've got to preach. And, um, but it's so good to be here. I, I, Robbie may be even watching the, the live stream. And uh, just to say to Robbie and Julie and the, and the grandbabies, I love you. And, but I'm blessed to be here. Uh, I got here um, two, year, two and a half years uh, since the last time I was here. And I think it was in March... Uh, two years ago that I literally escaped out of Dallas. Um, I think on the plane from Dallas to LAX, there was about five aircrew from aircraft, no passengers. And, and I was lucky really to get out then. And of course, everyone, when I got to LAX, the, the airport was like, like a bomb had hit it. There was nobody there. And of course, we're all paranoid. We didn't know how we were going to handle this pandemic thing. And I had about, I, I was dragging a cart of sanitizers behind me into the airport. I had a mask on here and a mask on there. And, and I was cleaning everything. I mean, I remember sitting down here and doing the armrests. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the seat, glory to God. And, and if anyone got, came near me, it was like this. You know, given the dirty look, it was kind of that. You, you remember that, right? And, um, and then I got on the plane and the captain crew came to me and said, you are very lucky to get on the plane because 30 minutes before we left, we were almost deciding to stay and not go and leave America, which means I would have been stuck here. Wow. Instead, I got stuck in a hellhole called Australia and, and I had to live in my house. We were literally prisoners of our house. I mean, it was just nuts. Talk about a government overreach and... A brother just gave me a, a, a plaque, which is very good. And it said, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. So I, I have things. I want to talk to you as a family today, this morning. And uh, I want to share some things. Before I do that, just some family business. I want to thank Todd and Cindy and the church. Because when I left in March for two and a half years my income came to a crashing end. And if it wasn't for this church, Gary Meek and Sabrina's church, and one other, uh, we, would have, we would have been in a sad state of affairs. And I watched these guys come through for me in an incredible way. And uh, not because I was doing meetings, not because I was preaching, but because they just loved me. And, and I want to say this, I want to express to the church our a absolute gratitude. There were times Kathy and I got quite weepy when this would come through. And then another couple that are here today, my, my these people are just amazing to me. Uh, uh, Tim and Pam Filkins, just the best couple in the world. They have walked with me for years and years as intercessors. Uh, they give to our ministry. They encourage us. And uh, uh, we honor all these people today. So could you give yourself and these others a clap today? I want us to turn to the book of Colossians.
I began to, uh, to ponder this morning. I, I knew what I was going to preach last night, but I began to ponder some things and God had me write some things down. I think when the, when the pandemic came and the world went absolutely crazy, I believe the enemy's intention was to permanently paralyze the church. But what he didn't count on, what he intended to kill the church, all it did was stall it. And the Lord spoke to me this morning and he said, the enemy has stalled the church, temporarily para temporary paralysis. But the word he gave me was this, and he gave me this for this church, and the word he gave to me, he also gave to my wife, Kathy. He said, tell them that God is going to accelerate that which has been stalled. Some of you have stalled in your relationship with God. Some of you have stalled financially. Some of you have stalled just in your fervency for God but God is coming and there's going to be an anointing come upon the church and I'm telling you now, I don't believe the true church of God will ever take another lockdown. We stand against lockdowns. We stand against government over and glory to God. It's time for us to rise up on the inside. When I left Australia, my God, I got on that plane and I'm usually a bit huffy with turbulence, right? We hit some turbulence, I thought, bring it on! There's gonna be a spirit of acceleration. I don't know how else to put it, but my God, we need to let the Holy Ghost rise up on the inside of us and don't take defeat. If you've stalled, shake yourself loose. Glory to Jesus. The devil kept speaking to me in Australia. He said, man, you're gonna be 26, four years off, 80. In, uh, I'm so old, I forgot my birthday. In September. <laughs> Myself, you dry bones. You start shaking and rattling, baby. Glory to God. So I put some hair color in my hair. <laughs> and I flew over and got here as quick as I could come. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the things I learned in the two years was that even under pressure, and under something we didn't know how to handle, the joy of the Lord is still our strength. Yes. And I got a, such a good dose of joy in freedom in the Holy Ghost. And I'm here to tell you, God is going to take you from stall to acceleration in the Holy Ghost. Time to rise up. You two stand up. This is when I got in the hotel room last night and the Lord increased it. My knowledge of what's going to happen this morning. There are going to be nations. This nation's one thing. But there is going to be nations that will send invites. There are winds of change coming. Things are not going to be like you're familiar with or used to. And he told me that some of the places you will go to if you did not have the covering of God upon your life, you could lose your life. Now, Sabrina knows I prophesy good things, but I'm also honest in my prophetic. But God is gonna place a mark on both your life and they won't be able to harm a head on your head. But you're gonna go there under the unction and the fire of the Holy Spirit and you're gonna move in the areas that you've never moved in before. And I hear, see where there's going to be an apostolic anointing, apostolic authority for the places He takes you into. You're going to break ground. Break ground that has been hard and stubborn, but it's going to bring such a freedom in the Holy Ghost. And there will be fear. When you know where God's about to take you, there will be fear. Be not troubled because God's mark is upon your life and He'll send you and keep you and keep you safe in the name of Jesus. Father, right now the Holy Ghost touch them in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. I'll never sit in a paralyzed stalling position myself ever again. I will defy the authorities if they try to lock me in my house again. You know, there are, there are thousands upon thousands rioting in Australia because of government overreach. And that's the sinners. What happened to the church in Australia? It was pulverized and paralyzed. Glory to God. But not this nation. We're going to rise up and we're going to take it. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So kill, dead and deprive of power, the evil desire lurking in your members, those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you, that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, and all greed and covetousness, for that is idolatry, the defying of self and other created things instead of God. I've got to say this to you, church, that where God is wanting to take us is into a higher place. One of the things I found when I began to shake myself and shake the mothballs off my spiritual life after being locked away is that I began to repent a lot. That yeah. God began to bring things to my consciousness and I began to, uh, and I thought, my God, I thought that was under the blood of Jesus. And I began to repent and ask God to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. There is such a desire in me to go higher and to pursue God, not on the earthly realm, but in the realm above. And God is wanting this church so it doesn't get sidelined anymore with any other stuff that may happen and come against us because I believe COVID was a dress rehearsal for other stuff to come. If you think it's going to get better, you're deceived. The Bible says in Timothy... Perilous times of great stress. Things hard to bear. Men will be lovers of self. We only have to get on Instagram to see how men in the Christian church are lovers of themselves. I've never seen such a parade of flesh on Instagram from the church as I have. Oh yeah, I watch. Rather than use the platform to share Christ, we share ourselves. You are a lover of self, not a lover of God. All right. When you don't pray, when you don't spend time with God, you love your own company rather than love the company of Jesus. You want to go higher, you're going to have to lose sight of you and gain sight of Christ and begin to follow Him. This is not the time for preachers to be limp-wristed and not bold and not courageous and not tell you the truth because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. My God, we need preachers that are going to say it the way it is. Perilous times of great stress. This has been but a dress rehearsal for what is coming. Now they're talking about other variants. 
How are we as a church going to fight what's coming? I'll tell you what, we need to pursue God and get to a high place because God wants to take us to a high place. If you're on a high place, looking down at a low place, you can spit on the low place. I haven't got time to waste anymore. My God, I'm 76 in, uh, in, in September. I haven't got time to mess around with the devil. My life is totally sold out wherever he sends me, but not India, wherever he sends me. Thank God he made me a missionary to the good. USA. Glory to God. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for my life. Man, I'm ready to fly. Glory to God. When I was on the plane flying over here in turbulence over the Pacific Ocean, I got angry. And I thought, boy, that's how to handle fear of turbulence, just be angry. Glory to God, it's flying over. I got a determination in me. I thought, my God, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to roll over and die like, like, like some people. Just, just die on the inside. You die in your head. You say, now I'm 70 years old. Dear God, I'll just let the young folk do it. I won't let the young folk do it. I will beat them to the pulpit. I get around some old Christians and my God, it looks like you're on dope. You're just the eyes. Hallelujah. You're going to stay fresh in the Holy Ghost. You need the eye of the tiger in you. You need to look scary. Glory to God. I was in the outback one time and this guy turned around and he said, I like hanging with you, Nigel, but he scared you, scare the life out of me. <laughs> And then I got him in a hotel room one night. We're just on the way back from the outback. He was really scared of me then because I prophesied over him. <laughs> Glory to God, unsaved. We need some courage and we need some boldness. So Colossians says we've got to aim for the high place. Now turn with me to Matthew. Matthew chapter 17. Glory to God. This morning's message is called glimpses. Everybody say glimpses. glimpses. There is a conflict between the upward call but the downhill craving. The pull between two experiences, that which is before me and that which is behind me, pulling my soul apart. There is conflict to go up and that is called the battle of the soul. Glory to God. And I want to say this today. God, write this down. God reveals himself in glimpses through our life. He gives us glimpses of our role in the kingdom. When you get a prophetic word, it is a glimpse. God very few times gives details, but he gave you a glimpse of what your future is. A glimpse, a prophetic word, a word that comes out of the Bible, a glimpse. God just gives you, go, that was God. The reason why he doesn't give us details and only glimpses because he knows we would really mess with it. I'm doing things now that I got prophesied over me when I was 25 years old. Glimpses. Yea, saith the Lord, glimpses. Hear something that comes out of the preacher's mouth, glimpses. And I'm here to stress, we are really in the end of days. I can't stress that enough. This is the end. It's not going to get better. The evil and the blackness on earth is going to get worse than we've ever seen it before. I don't tell you that to scare you. I tell you that to prepare you. Amen. We are living in the eve of the rapture. Yeah. See, some people don't believe in the rapture because the word rapture is not in the Bible. But then again, the word Bible is not in the Bible. 
Do you believe in the Trinity? The word Trinity is not in the Bible. But there is coming a day when Jesus is coming back for the church. And we need to be right. We need to be pursuing God now. Because right now, we need to be in preparation to go higher and move in a greater realm in signs, wonders, and miracles before God comes to take a church without spot or without wrinkle. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, He'll bring those that were that had already gone, He'll bring them with Him, the spirits of people that have died before, then he's going to raise their bodies, the DNA from the grave, wow. glorify their bodies so they're joined with their spirits. And we who are alive, yeah, that's what it says. we who are alive will be supernaturally changed and glorified, which will be the final victory over death. And the Bible says this, in the twinkling of an eye. Do you know how you measure the twinkling of an eye? Twelve thousandth of a second is all it's going to take. That's how you measure the twinkling of an eye. Twelve thousandth of a second. Bang! Yeah. Come on. We meet him in the air. Jesus, the first time, Christ doesn't come to earth. He's in the air. There. We go up to join him in the air. What they say here? Air. <laughs> join him in the air. Then we go to be with Christ. The reason why I'm telling you this is so you understand this. We are then faced with the beamer judgment of Christ, which judges the church for their works with the purpose of giving out rewards, not for sin. Then we go into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, now. Oh, glory to God. When now, the second phase of the second coming is when he comes back. So he comes for the church and he comes back at the end of the seven-year tribulation with the church. Yeah. God is going to do some things. When I talked about acceleration, you won't have to pray much. You won't have to wait on much. You just begin to walk out in faith and God's going to begin to do some things, shift some things. You're going to get an unction like you've never had before. You're going to move signs and wonders like you've never had before. There's a power of God coming on the church and it's going to rise up and we are going to punish hell for what they put us through for the last two years. We are going to be a nuisance to hell before this is over. Hallelujah. To hell with the devil. Now, we don't like the word militant, but that's what the church is going to be. We're going to be militant. For you to carry, what carries that glory has to be purified and separated. God will not use a vessel that has a, a shoe in both camps. I'm saying this, you use Instagram to witness. Don't you use Instagram to betray your flesh. Don't you do that. If God's going to accelerate us as a church, get ready for some speed. And I don't mean on the drug sort. Get ready for some speed. God's about to increase and accelerate the glimpses. Hallelujah. He's going to start to reveal himself unlike he's revealed himself in times past. God will snatch you into it, then he snatches you out of it and brings you back to reality. When you are chosen, you will forever be a pulled apart and you'll feel conflict in the soul. If you do not feel conflict in the soul, you're going nowhere in God. I feel like I'm in a piano bar at the Hilton. Just give me, um, no, it's all right. No, honestly, no. Yeah, just play something, but give me some strings, sort of slow, 
I don't know if you know that, but in Fraser Island, the largest sand island in the world, we took these guys to that place because they came and stayed with us in Australia. And Todd sat at the grand piano in a hotel and began to play and singing in tongues and he drew a crowd. They come round, bless God, and we're standing around and Todd's going, Randa Bashike, Ninkaramote, La Rama Sorobo. And they're like this with their drinks. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Glory to God. It's time to stir ourselves. These meetings, these meetings this week are going to powerful. I'm telling you, you miss a meeting and your name's going to be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. No, not really. No, no, no. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I have begged God to take some names from the book of life and he still hasn't done it. God scratch them out. Yeah. You say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Then vengeance them out of here. <laughs> Let me read this in the most calmer moment. Some of you are sitting there and I, I do love you. Some of you look really sour. Are you all right? Did you get out of bed the wrong way and stub your foot on the on the parrot? You all right? You okay? Just check. When I get about out of bed in the morning, I am pumped. Oh, I really mornings are my best times. I get out of bed. They said you wake up grumpy. I said no. I let her sleep. Oh my God. Freedom's coming back to the church. Joy is coming back to the church. Power is coming back to the church. We refuse to be stored or paralyzed one second more than, than what we have been. Let me read this incredible story about the Mount of Transfiguration. This is one wild show here, this one. We read over this, but when you read it, this is a total freak show for the disciples. It's wonderful. Chapter 17. Ta -ta -ta. First one. I think God looks on those that are really slightly crazy, and I think He really loves us. And I think the reason why He continues to use us because He loves craziness in heaven. Hallelujah. I do. That's so why I love the moorings and everybody associated with this church. You're all nuts. <laughs> it is all crazy and I just love that. I'm really shocked that no one's left yet. Normally I have about 10 leave. Glory to God, but you're still here. Cindy's the first one to normally go, but she's still here. That's good. <laughs> and six days after this, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There's some great keys in this. And his appearance, that's the appearance of Christ, underwent a change in their presence. And his face shone clear and bright like the sun. And his clothing became as white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah who kept talking with him. Then Peter began to speak, dear old Pete, and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good and delightful that we are here. If you approve, I will build three mega churches. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, a rather tick God said this, shut up, Peter. I'm paraphrasing it now, right? This is my son, my beloved, in whom I well and have always been delighted. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces 
and were seized with alarm and struck with fear. But Jesus came and touched them and said, get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus. Here's the deal. Jesus comes to these three, to Peter, James, and John, and he pulled them out of the 12. When God gives you and I a glimpse, he pulls us out of the crowd. He pulls us apart. Because of the uniqueness of your path, you can never be common because of that in your associations. When God wants you to come apart, you may have to lose some associations. You may have to lose some connections, connections that you thought were wonderful are now not so wonderful. And you need to get rid of the connections that you had before you were born again anyway. Because they'll never forget and they'll remind you of what you were and they'll never be able to handle what you're becoming. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I'm, I'm not friends with everybody. I can't be. I'm too young to die. I, honestly, I can't get around it. Now, look, I'll help people with depression all day long. I will spend hours prophesying and praying over you. But you and I are not going to have chicken. We're not going to sit down and have some fellowship because I'll end up shooting myself after you leave. See, what's coming to me since the last time I saw you, I believe, is a warrior anointing. There's an aggressiveness in me that I, I haven't really experienced too much in the past before. As you know, I've been a very quiet, mellow preacher. I'm just so excited. I never forget one time I got a prophetic word at Gary's church. And the guy said, You're gonna don't worry, he said, You're coming into a season of timelessness. Don't worry about your age. So from that moment, I don't worry about mage. As long as I have colour here, colour on tap, I'm fine. I'm good to go. Some of you look at me. He wears hair colour. You don't get to 75 and have black hair, for goodness sake. Like your hair colour is perfect. Hallelujah! Oh, I'll tell you another thing that happened to me. I went to the doctor because my knee was throbbing. Osteoarthritis, throbbing. Them in the, ooh, ooh, ooh. Heads up those who have that in your knee. Nobody. I mean, oh, thank God for that. And uh, so I'm throbbing. And the doctor said, you need a double knee replacement. I said, I, what? So we'll take one knee out and put another one in. I said, Okay. And the doctor was so young, he looked like 15, just out of a school uniform to do my operation. He was scarily young. So I went into the hospital and I had to have a spinal. She said, have you ever had a spinal? I said, I've never had a spine. I said, does it hurt? Spine injections don't sound good to me. He said, well, he said, it can do, but he said, I'll give you an injection, you'll think you've had five beers. So I said, okay, inject me. So he gave me an injection, and I felt like I'd been on the booze all night. Glory to God. <laughs> he said, would you sit on, on the bed? I've got to get to your back. I said, you can have my front, my back, my head, my arm. I'd, you take it all. Take it all. I didn't even feel the thing go in. All of a sudden, I, I couldn't feel from this. It was like I was cut in half. Nothing down here existed anymore. And he said, we've got two ways we can do this. I can knock you out, or you can watch it on the monitor. I said, I'm not going to watch myself being cut open. But when he came in to see me, to wheel me into the operating theater, this is how he came out. He comes running out and he goes like this, hey, hey, like this. I thought, he's my man. <laughs> Another crazy surgeon. <laughs> that didn't stop me. He said, if you don't exercise, he said, you will not it will not go well for you. But two or three hours a day, I exercised. Then I walked in the outback, five national parks. And I can still get my leg up like that, glory to God. And no pain. Hallelujah. 
Kara Mashikai. So here's the story. The miracle is not on the mountain, although it was pretty spectacular. The miracle is when he calls the three and they left the 12. Some people don't pass this test. They're not willing to leave the pack. They want to have familiar, familiarity. They, they prefer the mundane because they don't have to try hard for anything above being mundane. They prefer the associations with the familiar than the sacredness of that which is divine. Coming apart from the pack is lonely. Being seen as an oddball, which I get a lot. Being seen as an oddball is tough. But I was going to be an oddball with you and be accepted by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we're going to follow Christ, He is going to call you apart just as you are alone. You realize that the big things we mostly that we go through, it's mostly alone anyhow. Mostly, mostly alone. So what makes us eligible for this kind of mountaintop experience? Write this down. What makes us eligible is faith in the valleys that makes you eligible for the mountain. Being proven in the hard place, the struggle, the hell of life. If you are willing to see the 12, then you're not, if you're not willing to see the 12 rather, you'll never see the one. And I want to see the one more than I want to see you. Yes, yes, Lord. I don't mean that in any disrespect, but I want to see the one. When those three finally got to their feet after being scolded by God the Father, all they saw was Jesus, was Christ. I want to see the one. I don't know what it is about my age. You get to my age and the time for fooling around is at the finish. And I keep short accounts with God. I watch what I watch. I watch what I see. Kathy and I spend most of the time in the house conscious of God. We talk about the Word. We talk about the presence of God. We, we just don't have a life behind the pulpit. We have a life outside of the pulpit. We are lovers of Christ. And, and both of us are pushing in to go further and higher because unless the church is prepared to go higher, you, you won't survive what the enemy is about to bring. There is a darkness and a blackness coming on the on the on the on the earth, unlike we have ever, ever experienced before. I spent four to five hours a day in the preparing to come over in the Word of God for several months, and, and all I got from the Lord, times are black. This is just a this is just a preparatory for what the enemy is going to send against us. And if your life is not right. You, you need to get it right for your sake and for those around you. I realize I'm a resource for a lot of people. My life needs to be clean and pure. Now, you've seen me. It doesn't mean you have to be a sad sack. You, you can enjoy being a Christian. I enjoy my life. I enjoy Jesus. I enjoy churches. I enjoy the body of Christ. Remember that word, acceleration. That which has been stalled is going to be accelerated. Hallelujah. The struggle of being called up is to think in that level of your calling. Because you've only thought in the lower realm, now the challenge is you must think in the higher realm where God is about to take you. You can have all what it takes to operate on that level, yet still have the cravings of that lower level. Everybody has this struggle. That which is before me and that which is behind me. I see where I should be, but then behind me keeps pulling me back. 
You know, it's interesting because if this line of the carpet is, is, one, is the end of one season, we, and we'll call this the lower life, we'll call this the higher life. When you step over that line for the first time into the higher life, this is still perilously close to you. And it's not until you get past that line, turn your eyes upon Jesus, and the things of earth will go strangely dim. Because people who have embraced the higher life never again talk about their past because they're so preoccupied with what's before them. <clears throat> I found it really difficult to stray because I would spend all these hours in prayer and, and I got used to hanging out with God to a point I didn't want to stay in, 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 in my life anymore. Many times I go to bed and I say to the Lord, Hey, Lord, this would be a phenomenal night for me to go to heaven. And I'd wait for Him to kill me. Night after night, I'd wait for God to take me out. He never did. But when you embrace the higher life, this one's the pits. Huh? But there's coming a realm and an unction and an anointing is going to lift the church into this higher realm. Amen. And I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. I am so ready to go. Everybody that has got an upward call has wrestled with the downward craving. So Jesus led them up into a high place. The Mount of Transfiguration is 9,000 feet above sea level, which meant there is snow at the top all year round. I'm reading this because it's too much to remember. And I'm 75. As you climb higher, you're going to feel every type of weather. Sunny at the bottom, snowing at the top, predictable familiar at the bottom, unpredictable at the top. It's the high place. If you want sameness and a climate you can predict, stay down in the lower place. And I love what Jesus did. The Bible says He led them up the mountain. He led them. He didn't give it to them all at once. He led them up the mountain. If you have a mind to climb the mountain, Jesus will lead you up that mountain. He doesn't beam you up, Scotty. Takes you step by step. If you'd got there fast, you would not be able to make the adjust adjustments. Write this down. On the mountain was disclosure. What, what is hidden from you now <coughs> will be disclosed to you up the mountain. And you will see Christ in another form. Let me explain. When, when I was born again, I got born again as a Baptist. I saw, I had a glimpse of God. Salvation. And it was phenomenal. When I was saved, I was truly saved. Man, I knew I was born again. Now, he got, a, he got a rough boy in me when he got me. I was a wild child, but he cleaned me up. It's only taken 75 years to clean me up, but he's been working on me. Th then I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost as a Baptist. And I was kicked out of the Baptist church because I spoke in tongues. <laughs> right? In the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I got another, another glimpse of God. God came to me in another form. Here's the problem. Many of us have only seen Christ in one form. But when we climb higher to the mountain, we have full disclosure. They had walked with Jesus on the earth, but when they got to the mountain, there was disclosure to what He really was like. And what you've known, the, the, God, the Christ in the valley is different from the Christ on the mountain. And as many Christians will never climb that mountain because when you climb the mountain and allow Christ to lead you, it's going to cost you everything that you've got. What time do you finish here? No, seriously, what time do you finish? No time? I love you. 
Huh? Yeah. Two o'clock Spanish service. I can do that. <laughs> Glory to God. You are a naughty boy. I, I, in this last two years, I saw glimpses of, of, of Jesus that I had never seen before. And I, I'm going to, because I wear my heart on my sleeve, I tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. But for years, my wife and I have always panicked over retirement. And, I, and I've never wanted to preach just to get money. That's the pits. I don't want, I never want to be like that. But, but I watch God do miracles for me. I got another glimpse of God in the area of finances. Over the last two years, I said to Kathy on the phone, Yesterday, I said, we will never doubt God ever again in this area. Glimpses. So they go to the mountain. And the Bible says this, and his appearance underwent a change in their presence. And his face shone clear and bright like the sun. And his clothing became white as light. And then, poof, poof, Moses and Elijah talking to them, talking to Christ. Glimpses, flashes of his true essence throughout life. And the reason why we chase God and the reason why we pursue him so hard, he has the key to the mystery. Our identity and our secrets in our life are hid with Christ. Our purpose and our destiny is in Christ. And the only way that we can see the issues, the real us, is to pursue Christ. Because not only do we pursue Him, we also find out who we are. We have to go outside of our comfort zone to catch him, overcoming our fears. It's interesting. So three of the 12 followed him up the mountain. They went two miles in the air to see not only who he was, but who they were. Now, I'm going to wind this up because I really want to pray for people today. It's been a while since I've prayed for a lot of people. I started laying hands on the neighborhood cats. <laughs> Come here. Push, 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 push. Hey, that name of Jesus. <laughs> Another one, Lord, blessed. <laughs> and all these cats lined up outside the house. Prophesied over each one of them. Glory to God. <laughs> do you love Jesus? Woof. What are you doing here? Hallelujah. This is for cats only. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So they get up to this mountain, this high, this high place. And, and Peter Dear old foot in the mouth, Peter. Peter really screws this whole thing up. And Peter can see where three mega churches would begin on the Mount of Transfiguration. Pastor Jesus, Pastor Elijah, and Pastor Moses. Peter said, my God, this experience is wild. I could live here. And the God the Father is trying to do something up there and Peter can't shut his mouth. And he leans over heaven and says, and he overshadows them with his presence and his light. He says, shut up, Peter. Yea, he saith. Listen to my son. Here's what destroys us 
when we climb into an area that we're not familiar with spiritually. We open our mouth and we'll talk our silly head off and many times talk our way right down the mountain. (coughs) This was not about Peter. He was honoured and privileged that he was going up there to watch and get a glimpse of God, to get a glimpse. I remember going to Tom Peter's church and and on the Sunday I I had an altar call. It was 2,000 people in the church. I'd never been in a church of 2,000 before. And the Lord spoke to me, said, when you get into the meeting, when you get into this meeting, shut your mouth until you get used to the room that I've placed you in. So I got into the room. I wasn't in haste to have the meeting. And I just waited on the Spirit of God till I got used to where I was. And then slowly but surely began to unwind and talk to the church out of my anointing and out of the Spirit. The danger is thinking when you go higher, you've got to tell everybody, every man and his dog, where God has taken you. Just keep your mouth shut. This is what Jesus said. He said, when you go, as you're walking with him down the mountain now, he said, do not say anything to anybody until I have been resurrected. Some people I find that have gone and are climbing into that high place kind of have a mystery about them. They're not talkative about what God and where God is taking them because they have, they have so honoured the sacredness of where God has taken them. Where God has taken them. So this is what's going to happen. This church is going to know an accelerator Many of your many of your ministries stalled and become dormant and non-active. When I pray for you today, we're going to activate. The same way when you get a new credit card, you've got to dial one eight hundred number. We're going to dial a one eight hundred number in the spirit, and we're going to the prayer today is going to be activation, which means I could pray for everybody unless you're fearful. But I do want to pray for everybody today. And you say, well, that might take some time. It may not. But yet it might. But the question is, if God's going to bring acceleration, how hungry are you? Just imagine, because I know Cindy's really believing for a move of God, right? (coughs) Just imagine. Because you can't, I've learned this with revival because I've been in revivals. I mean, genuine revivals. Only God can pull that number off. You can pray it in. You can do everything you like. But unless God shows up, unless you have a sovereign move of God and people come into the building because they feel so drawn that they can't stay away, that's revival. That's the suddenly of God. So we're we're going to pray this morning. And I'm going, to, I'm going to dial the spiritual 1-800 number over your life. And you're going to be activated. You're going to go from stall to activity. I believe there are going to come seasons and times where the church, is, this church, is going to be caught up into the high place. Some of you won't even go home on a Sunday. You'll just stay here and just marinate in the presence. Some of you need a good marination. 